I didn't think it would come to this. You found me out. I was caught. And it's true, all of it. I pursue Torah obedience. There were rumors afloat, but now you've heard it here, straight from the horse's mouth. Must be a Pharisee, then. I can't seem to go anywhere on social media without card-carrying license-to-send Christians throwing Yahusha's rebukes downwind, apparently to reveal the error of my ways. You see, the logic is, if Yahusha rebuked the Pharisees, and I seek to obey Torah, then I must be the Pharisee whom Yahusha rebuked. Oh dear. Let me see if I got this right. Yahusha rebuked the Pharisees for being works-based and keeping the law, while praising the Goyim for being disobedient? Does that just about sum it up? Worst deductive argument ever. But for the moment, let's roll with the punches and go with it. Rather than simply taking your word for it, or my own, we'll turn to the Gospel of Matthew to see why Yahusha rebuked the Pharisees. As usual, I'll present the passage, pausing only for comment. Let's get straight to it then. Matthew chapter 15 verse 1 Then the scribes and Pharisees from Jerusalem drew near to him, and they said, Why do your Talmudim transgress the tiquinim of the ancient ones? Uh-oh, the scribes and Pharisees are arriving from Jerusalem to draw near to Yahusha, probably up to no good. You will tell me the word Talmudim is not in your Bible, and why am I promoting the Talmud? Quite the opposite, in fact. Before this is over, you shall see how anyone who promotes disobedience to Torah is in fact the author of their own Talmud. I probably should have explained before we began, we're reading today from the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew, which predates the Greek. If this sounds suspicious to you, then I suggest you read along with the Texas Receptus. Oh fine, I'll do it for you. Let's read from both. Matthew 15, verse 1, the Hebrew Gospel. Then the scribes and Purushim from Jerusalem draw near to him, and they said, Why do your Talmudim transgress the tikkunim of the ancient ones? Chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, from the King James Version. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Crisis resolved. Talmudim is just a Hebrew word for student or disciple. Even Pythagoras had disciples. Socrates had disciples. Plato had disciples. Aristotle had disciples. I watched the Oliver Stone movie Alexander, and most of Aristotle's Talmudim were gay. But then again, everybody here mentioned derived from the mystery religions and secret societies. Therefore, there are good Talmudim and there are bad Talmudim. We should choose to be a good Talmudim. But how can we know the good from the bad? Certainly, Yahusha would know. You will immediately tell me the Pharisees are protesting Yahusha on the basis that his disciples are transgressing Torah, and that Yahusha is okay with it, just as he is okay with you transgressing it, and vice versa, apparently. Time for rebuking against those works-based religious people, it seems. The word tikkunim, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, simply means a man-made regulation, amendment, or improvement, quote-unquote, to the Torah, something which is not a part of the original commandment of Yahuwah. Therefore, the Pharisees cannot possibly be protesting Yahusha for disobeying Torah, as clearly they're protesting him for obeying it rather than their own man-made law. That can only mean one thing. The Pharisees have done away with Torah. Why do they not richly wash their hands when they want to eat? Hebrew Matthew 15 verses 1 through 2. Or in the King James, For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. I can't find that command anywhere in Torah. Can you? Must be one of those improvements to the Bible then. Continuing. Verse 3, But he answered them and said, And why do you transgress the commandments of El on account of 
your decrees. Or in the King James, if you would like. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Matthew 15, verse 3. In either version, it kind of sounds like Yahushua is rebuking the Pharisees for transgressing the commandments of Elohim to me. Why are they transgressing the law exactly? Yahushua doesn't leave us hanging because they have their own tradition which says to do otherwise. Wink, wink. Hmm, sounds familiar? There's a whole lot of traditions in the Catholic and Christian Church which advocates an improvement to and freedom from Torah obedience. But that's probably just a coincidence. Surely, Yahushua couldn't possibly be addressing anybody else who advocates the same message as the Pharisees. Perhaps I'm reading this all wrong. Let's keep at it then. Verse 4. Did not El say, Honor your father and your mother? And whosoever curses his father or his mother, that he must die? But you say that any man may say to his father and his mother, Anything profitable that I or you may have, it is a free will offering, and so he does not honor his father and his mother. You yourselves transgress the commandments of Yahuwah on account of your evil ordinances. The Hebrew Gospel, verses 4 through 6. And now for the King James. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Matthew 15, 4 through 6, King James Version. There it is again. The Pharisees are transgressing the commandments of Yahuwah, even going so far as to make them of no effect by their tradition. Seems like I'm picking up a pattern. Wasn't that a song in Fiddler on the Roof? Tradition, tradition, tradition. How can anyone claim Yahushua was scolding them for being works-based when you can't very well even obey your parents unless a work is involved? Contrarily, disobeying one's parents would make Torah ineffective. Seems legit. I've yet to see a concise deductive argument anywhere except one which has Messiah declaring Torah obedience. Perhaps there will be a surprising twist to his conclusion. Let's read on. Verse 7 Rightly did Yashayahu speak about you, saying, This people which honors me with words, but their heart is far from me. They honor me in vain, imposing your instructions and commandments of men. From the King James, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew 15, 7-9, King James Version. It really doesn't get any clearer than that. If it is our goal to worship Elohim in vain, then Yahusha tells us how to go about doing it. Listen carefully. Teach for doctrines the commandments of men. Oh dear, he doesn't leave us a third option, does he? So far, I have only read two options. There is the Torah of Elohim or the doctrines of men. Take your pick, one or the other. But you can't have both. You can devote your entire life to worshiping Jesus while snubbing Torah and think he will be okay with that. But Messiah says otherwise. Here is the passage which Yahusha was quoting from. Yeshayahu, Isaiah, chapter 29, 13 through 14. Wherefore Yahuwah said, For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. 
Wowzers. Yahusha fell in agreement with the Torah observant prophet Yeshayahu, who, in turn, fell in agreement with Yahuwah, the Most High Elohim. Apparently, Yahusha didn't come to undo his father's work after all. Go figure. It says right here what will happen to those who honor Yahuwah with their lips while obstinately cling to the traditions of men. Wisdom shall perish, and understanding will be hidden from them. Not good. If you still find yourself in disagreement, then I encourage you to read that again, over and over again if you have to. Fight the indoctrination. Hundreds and thousands of years of man-made doctrine and church tradition. Tradition, tradition, tradition. Messiah says one thing, and your church pastor and the Christian and university and billions of Christians and Catholics worldwide, including the cast of Fiddler on the Roof, says another. Think. Whatever happens, don't let cognitive dissonance win the day. Your journey down the narrow path depends upon it. Perhaps this is all a fluke. Maybe I'm just selectively choosing scripture, which only appears to advocate for Yahuwah's instructions in righteous living, you tell me. A Pharisee is still defined as a works-based Torah-observant individual, no matter what this particular passage has to say on the matter. Fine. Then let's find another confrontation between Yahusha and the Pharisees. A second witness, if you will. The same story can be found in the Gospel of Mark. This time, I'll let you read through the entire narrative without breaking for comments. Or, since you're listening to the video, how about I just do it for you? The Hebrew Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. And then there came to Yahusha some of the Pharisees and the wise ones of the old law, who came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his Talmudim eating without ritually washing hands, they despised them. For the Yehudim do not eat unless they always wash the hands ritually, according to the decree of the ancient ones. Also, there are many other statutes that they command them to keep. That is, to ritually wash their lids and silver drinking vessels. And because of this, they asked Yahusha, saying, Why are your Talmudim not keeping the decrees of the ancient fathers? but eat bread with ritually unwashed hands all the day. So Yahushua answered, saying to them, Well did Yashia prophesy of you deceiver, saying, This people honor me by word, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they honor me, teaching the instruction and commandments of men. So they forsake the commandments of El, while holding unto whatever was delivered of men and came to them concerning cups and their silver drinking vessels, and likewise many other things. And like these words he said to them, You are breaking the commandments of Yahuwah in order to keep your own institutions. For Moshe said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoso curses his father or his mother must certainly die. But you say that anything of them which a man vows, because he made a vow, his father and mother should profit him. And afterwards, you do not allow him to repay the father and mother. Thus, you are breaking the commandments of Yahuwah on account of your institutions which you obtained, and many other evils you do. In conclusion, a Pharisee is someone who obstinately breaks the commandments of Elohim and teaches others to do the same in order to honor Yahuwah by their own man-made traditions. All lips, no heart. Don't be a Pharisee. Pharisees are bad. Declarations of faith and honoring Yahusha with our lips are neat in a church service. Edit. Not really. Flee. Flee from any church who practices this as fast as you can. But at the end of the day, there is only one way to honor Yahuwah, the Most High Elohim, and His Son, Yahusha HaMashiach. With your heart. And that is by keeping His commands.